Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Long Long Plays, where I take a relaxed and off-the-cuff informal look at games I've enjoyed in the past, from 1979 to 1999, and this is Transport Tycoon Deluxe from 1995, and right off the bat, um, you're listening to the music and you're thinking, wow, that sounds almost modern. That's because I'm using the SGM sound font, and uh, let's just play for an hour. Um, Before I go any further, this is obviously the DOS version, and uh, you don't really play this version. I mean, you can for the sake of nostalgia purposes, but it's been largely outdated by OpenTTD. So if you want to look at OpenTTD, uh, Google that, and also look up some tutorial videos about it by Master Hellish. He'll explain it far better than I ever could. So, let's see an old man play Transport Tycoon and mess up. So, you have options. We'll have a brief look at those before we get cracking. You've got your grass, you can have a snow level or a desert level, or, for some reason, Toyland. You know, but we'll go with standard grass, and you can create and play scenarios. Um, Let's have a look at those, shall we? Create scenario. That brings us to an editor editor. So, we shall abandon the editor. So you can make your custom ones, or alternatively, you can play a scenario. But as you can see, we don't have any scenarios saved. So what we're going to do is we're going to briefly look at the game options. So currency in pounds, that's correct. Drive on left. And every 12 months, default vehicle designs, Imperial, Miles, and town names English. Chris Sawyer was an Englishman, I believe, or Scottish man. He was British, anyway. I don't want to confuse English and Scottish. That that would not be good. Difficulty? Yeah, we'll go with medium. And we'll skip the tutorial. And we'll hit new game. So, we have a choice here. Uh, pile of random ones. Uh, we're just going to go with generate random new game. And immediately we will hit the pause button. So, our manager's name will of course be Lonnie. And let's give him a new face. Uh, We're looking for something suitably badass. So we'll cycle through the random faces. Uh, Isn't that just that guy with shades? (laughs) He's trying, it's like we're going through a lineup of people and he's, he's been rejected and he's come back with some sunglasses on and he's like, I'm a new guy, pick me! There we go. Bald, suave, sophisticated. Looks like he's a million bucks, or pounds in this case. Uh, what's our colour scheme? Let's go with a nice dark blue. Yeah. And our manager name we've got, haven't we? It's Lonnie. Company name? Lonnie Transport. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. We'll unpause briefly and change our company name to, you guessed it, Get oh, get Off My Lawn Transport. Ah, oh, look at that. Can't do it. So we'll just cancel that. Lawny Transport is fine. And we'll briefly pause again. So that's your basic manager thing. You also have the option to build an HQ. We'll look at that later. First thing we do is we'll have a look at the map of the world. We'll we'll expand that out by clicking this button. And you'll see, gosh, there's a whole pile of towns. But if I mouse over like this, it'll go crazy on me. You have to right click and drag so you can see what's going on. And you'll note, there's not much to go by there. There's a pile of towns and there's a pile of red marks. But you'll also note that there are these buttons down here. We click that, for instance. That allows us to look at the various vehicles and stuff on the map. Gives us contextual information. This is the one we want. Industries. Now, for my playthrough of Transport Tycoon, I started with Industries. And uh, why fix what's broken, eh? What isn't broken, rather. There's a good spot there. Two coal mines. That's just what we want. So we'll close our map 
and we'll look up here. Well, howdy! There's a power station, and two coal mines, and a power station. I think we see a solution here. Different industries require different things. You just click on them. It's like, that produces coal. And you can be like, hey, what's that? That's Marnbury Farm. That produces livestock and grain. None of which has been transported. This is a power station from Mathing Hill City. It requires coal. And everything is delightfully British. So, the question is, how do we want to transport this coal? And uh, we've got 100,000 to play with. But uh, before we go any further, let's show you the town directory. That gives you a list of all the towns in the game. There's not that many at the minute, because it's early days, and that's fine. They'll grow and change and so on with the passage of time, which isn't happening because we hit the pause button. Then you've got your subsidies. These are offered by various councils and stuff, and run for a year, I believe, a yearly subsidy, and it boosts your profits. They'll offer money on top of the money you'd usually make, and it encourages uh, growth of industries. What else have we got here? Let's look at this button. Do we have any stations? No. There's our finances. You can either borrow or repay money. And we've got our nice little thing that we have already discussed. You can do operating profit graphs, all kinds of graphs, but obviously nothing's happening at the minute. So we'll look at that later. Company league table, we're first. That's the way it should be. Fund new industry. Now this is an interesting button. If you've decided, hey, I want something to be built, you can, you know, build it if you have the money. Which we don't, because look at the cost. Nearly a million pounds to build stuff. So this is your trains, and then you've got your lorries, and then you've got your boats, and you've got your planes. And you'll also note, you can have multiple windows on the screen. You know, Chris Sawyer is nice like that. It's almost like an operating system. And uh, Windows was a thing in 1994. So, I mean, he, he took inspiration from that or Mac OS or whatever. And uh, you have your zoom in and zoom out buttons. We can get a further or closer look at the world. Now, here's the important bit. These are your construction options. So you've got railway, you've got road, you've got dock, you've got airport. And only one of these can be selected at a time. You also have the most pointless button in the game. You can plant trees, if you want. Let's not. You've got your jukebox, playing Little Red Diesel. Good stuff. And you've got newspaper reports, which can play last message and change the settings. Last but not least, if you're confused, you can just find out information about anything. Take screenshots and find out about Transport Tycoon. Alright, I think we've run down the basics here, so let's get into action. Now, I have a choice here between lorries or trains. And I'm going to pick trains, so... I hit the wrong button there. I saw the train and I hit it. So what we need is a station. And uh, let's have number of tracks 2 and platform length 5. Alright. Now, why isn't that building? <laughs> Interesting. What happens if I... Why is that not building? That could be a problem. Um, because I'm paused. That's why it's not building. <laughs> I managed to confuse myself there. We shall now unpause the game. <laughs> ah, James. Right. So, we'll build our station. Run Runway mines. We need train depots. We'll shove two of them in there. Like that. And now we need to build another one there. We will raise the land. And it will cost us a pretty penny to do so. But you'll see why I'm doing it in a minute. Oof. That's a big old hit to our finances. But it will be worth it, trust me. If 
if we can just shape the world the way we want it to be. Prophetic words, eh? Um, let's get that one down as well. And we will construct the same sort of station uh, right about here. Okay, Maffing Hill City Heights. Let's build two random depots. We don't have to, you know, it's not compulsory to do that, but uh, why not? Let's sort one of these tracks out. You can click and drag like that, um, but we've got ourselves into a wee bit of a corner here. So we'll lower that and we'll just make it easy for this first one. And then the next one that comes along, we'll sort that out with a little more difficulty. I'm all for making things more difficult for myself. It's just what I do. Let's see now. There is a bit of a ground issue there. Let's just... Yep, that cost a pretty penny. We're already running low on cash. Like that's, that's a third of our money just gone into this railway line. And I'm banking on the fact that this is going to be a money spinner. Right. Shall we have a second train yet? I don't think so. We'll, we'll focus on the one and we click on the depot and hit new vehicles. Let's get a Jubilee Steam. Those are uh, our choices there. Oh, 300, 30, 30 grand for that. All right. We'll have a steam train with, let's see how many coal trucks. Uh, what's the five? So we'll build four, four of those. And then we'll go to runway mines and we'll click that and we'll hit full load. There's a little ticker tape thing telling us production is down. So we go to end of orders and then go to, oh, new transport company. So somebody near Tenley. Uh, we'll not worry about that right now. We'll focus on getting the train up and running. So there it is going to runway mines and uh, that should be producing plenty of coal. It is. So we're going to take a gamble here and uh, I think it will pay off. Famous last words. Let's try and level this out a bit. Ooh, this is, uh, this is proving costly, but I think it will be worthwhile. Now, the more seasoned players will already note, hey James, you're doing this wrong. Multiple trains can share multiple tracks, you know, with the correct signaling. Uh, there's signals there and everything. And uh, that's more cost efficient, but I am absolutely useless. And you'll note it's like, hey, can't do that. There's a train going over it. And it was right. So we'll continue constructing this. And you see we've run out of space here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little detour by changing the direction. And then continuing on. This will be our secondary train. Can't build over something that's already built. Uh, fans of SimCity will probably be able to spot like uh, similarities, SimCity 2000 in particular. Let's see what a tunnel will do. Yeah, you see the way that's laid out? We'll build that there. Five grand down the drain. Okay, so you'll note that we do not have a lot of money. <laughs> That train, on the other hand, has been making us a nice little profit. So it's keeping us afloat. We're going to go and we're going to borrow uh, about 40 grand. Eh, yeah. So our loan is now 140 and interest will be creeping up on us there. So we'll build one more of these boys. What's that looking like? For yeah, it's up there. It's cool. That's good. We'll buy that and we'll give it one, two, three. Yeah, just three. Ah, no, one more, one more. Okay, and uh, are we able to copy orders? No. In Open TTD, if you hit the orders button and then you click on another train, it'll give the same orders. All right, so train two is ready to go. 
So it'll load up and you'll see Runway Mines and we can look at the ratings here. Coal is only mediocre and the reason for that obviously is that our trains aren't supplying it quickly enough with uh, not supply, taking away quickly enough. So what about the ratings here? There is none because we're not transporting anything from here. So now we can go to our trains graph and you'll see here profit this year seven grand pretty much and profit for the other one is two grand that will creep up so we've got about 20 grand to play with let's have a look and see what's nearby shall we uh, there, there's Maffing Hill City there it is absolutely tiny look at that it's tiny and uh, doesn't appear to be close to anything what about Runway and Marnbury? They're pretty close. We could do a passenger service, like the computer is doing there. Look at that. He's got like a passenger service going on there between Tenley and uh, Flintown. He's probably going to beat me. Wait and see. Uh, but we are not going to care about people. Let us focus upon industry. So we'll go to our industry map. And you'll see up here, there's iron and let's see what what is there is there a steel mill anywhere nearby let's see it's oil there's a steel mill oh iron ore that's what we wanted isn't it iron ore iron ore mine you can always check like say if you get confused so it requires iron ore and what's that up there iron ore. The question is, do we have the money to make that connection? I'm not sure we do, but you know what? Let's do it anyway. But this time, instead of uh, trains, we're going to go with a lorry station. So we're going to build one here. Uh, let's get the orientation right. There we are. And this is going to be fun. <laughs> I've, uh, I've built myself into a corner here. Some of this landscaping is desperate. Look at that. Very hilly. You can change the options for uh, the way a landscape works. So uh, we'll just build our way from the iron place that I have lost. That is my coal place. Let's zoom out, shall we? Another coal place. Probably looking at me and like, James, how could you have lost that? There it is. So we'll zoom in on that. And uh, brief word about the music. It's absolutely wonderful. It's a beautiful sort of combination of blues and jazz and rock of the era, you know. I'm just trying to think about how to do this. I think if we head that way, that will be an effic e efficient use of our time. So I'm going to raise that there. Oh, that price. Well, he who dares wins, right? That's how the saying goes, isn't it? Roads are a little different, but only a little. See the way I built half a road there? I built half a road in order to make a turn like that. And the reason I'm turning, you'll soon see. I think we need a little more space here, don't you? There we are. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? There we are. Nice bit of road. And... What we're going to do is we're not going to worry about all this hill stuff. Why would we need to worry about hills, eh? Just head out here and we can build a tunnel. Yeah, easy peasy. That means we can build a second tunnel, but will this be an enormous tunnel that will cost a lot of money? Eh, not exactly cheap, 
but it'll do. There's a subsidy offered. First passenger service from Plenbury to Friendbury will attract a year's subsidy. But they're passengers. We do not care about them. So we've lost our place on the map, which is unfortunate. But if we go to stations, we can locate where we were before. That's why that's useful. See that in action there? It's great. Instead of me blethering on about it, I just did it. Okay, we'll do a little turning here. There we are. Thrilling stuff. And the thing is, there are certain games you watch somebody play them and you're like, eh, I don't get it. You know? What's so special about this? Until you actually play it yourself. And then you're like, wow. So that's what he was going on about. That's why that was good. And the year has done. The year has done? English. Ugh. Uh, I guess we can just carry on as we are. As you can see, we, uh, we are running at a loss at the minute. Which is okay. Because you can see our train income there was substantial. We've already made nearly half back on what we spent for the construction. And that was in less than a year. And that'll just keep running for a number of years. Which is what we want. So the question is, which is going to be the most efficient tunnel? And the answer is none of those. That is, hmm. If we lower that land a little. Oh, that was costly. That hit us in the wallet there. It is very easy in this game to uh, get into the sunk cost fallacy. You know, when you're determined to make a specific sort of road structure or rail structure and uh, you're building a way to yourself and you're like, I'm nearly there, I'm nearly there, you start spending more and more and more on like terraforming of the land and stuff instead of thinking smartly and saying, hey, let's not just bulldoze our way through, let's just uh, build around here. Yeah. Uh, it's costing us more, obviously, because we're going through somebody's farm, which isn't very nice of us. And I think it would have been better if we'd done a train with this one, but I just wanted to show an alternate form of transportation within the R. There we are. That looks good. That looks very good. So we'll build that there. Maffing Hill City Mines is up and running. So we'll build that out to there. And our finances are perilous as a result of all this terraforming of the land. And the thing about vehicles is, generally speaking, you can have more of them, but they won't make as much money as trains. They're less efficient. So there's our depot, and there is the long and winding road, and it accepts iron ore. So what we'll do now, I think we might need to borrow again. Let's have a look. So there's your various goods trucks, and we want an MPS iron ore truck, but look at the cost. So we'll go back and we will borrow more. Yep. And that's all we can do. 14 grand. I guess we quickly buy two of those because we were going to run out of money otherwise. Uh, go to full load. That means, yep, we'll take all the ore you can give us and we'll go there. Get going. You. Same job. Full load. And that first stop, you'll note, he's, uh, hold on, I've done that wrong. Oh well, it doesn't actually matter. 
It doesn't matter the order so long as the starting one is correct, you know. So, the mines are producing, which is good. And you'll see you've got a little camera. Go away, Heffingly Market Transport. You've got a little camera showing the road vehicles and trains and whatever you want. Like, we, we can go and we can look at uh, one of our trains now. Say that one. Right. We're making some profit there. Which is good. We can turn this around before the hour's out, you know? Now, I'm not going to show you planes, I don't think, in this, or ships. But they, they are two options there. Planes are for passengers. It's, it's for later in the game, you know, when you've got a more substantial empire and uh, you can blow a pile of money on planes because while the planes themselves cost a lot more, as I said in the review, um, setting them up is a lot easier. There's a lot less navigation because planes just fly from airport to airport and you don't have to worry about all this terraforming or stuff like that. So, short term, they cost a lot of money, but long term, they're much more cost effective in the way they uh, move passengers around. And they can cover substantial amounts of the map later on as well. So, we've got Maffing Hill City Scythe, and it's producing steel. Now, do we have a steel mine, uh, not a factory nearby? Instead of searching randomly in the map, let's have a look and see if there's an industry. We're looking for a factory. There's a factory. So that will take our steel. And that is not too far away, is it? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? If we construct a depot there, right? And then we build out Let's just, uh, I think we can afford tunnels. What do you think? I think we'll do it. The trains will keep producing profit for us and uh, we, we, we can con construct some tunnels and get to where we want to be now. That is, uh, it's not great, but it will do. Also, raising land at sea level costs a lot more than uh, raising land normally. I, watch now, I'm afraid I'm going to have to do it. Requires 10 grand. So there you can see a mistake that I've made. I can't afford currently to connect that. I went ahead and I tried. That was a mistake. So we're just going to have to wait until we have more money to uh, finish that construction. Can't work on it forever though. Uh, can't wait on it rather forever. We need to get that done. So here's an idea. We'll use the demolish. I'm sure it'll cost us money, but what we can do instead of that tunnel is we can build up here and we will just stealthily avoid. That's right. I'm talking about stealth in a transportation simulation. It's not exactly Thief the Dark project, is it? So, we can avoid that little bit there and just build around and obviously lorries and stuff will go a lot slower uphill. A lot. But as a result, we might be able to connect this. I say might. We could connect it from here, potentially. Let's do that. There we are. And we'll go downhill here. And we will need to do a little landscaping here. Ooh, that tunnel. <laughs> Imagine that collapsing your own tunnel. Screw you, industry. I didn't want to be a transport magnate anyway. There we are. And I think we have a link. Just about. So. We can go now, and we can go to our depot all the way over here. I mean, why build another? It's already connected, right? And we need a steel truck. Six grand. We can build one. Excellent. 
So I want you to go there. And then to there. Sorted. So he's on his way. He'll make a little bit of a profit for us. Not a lot. But we can expand on that as we get richer. If we get richer. We will get richer. Come on. We need to be positive about this. <laughs> so let's have a look. We can have a little overview of how everyone's doing. Both our trains are profitable. They're making decent profit. If you look at our lorries, you'll note, look at the profit difference. Sure, they're cheaper to run and they are cheaper to build, but the profit is substantially less because they can only deliver one each time. Well, these trains are on four. So let's send that one to the train depot and uh, let's build a coal truck onto that and send it back out again. Now, you heard the sound of something breaking down there. As these get less reliable, they start to break down and you need to replace them. Uh, all in due time. So what I'm doing here is I'm giving each of them one more because that will increase the amount that they can there you go he's got his the amount of coal they can take and you'll see the rating is now very good for coal because I'm I'm taking almost all of it that they can produce and I'm just gonna hit the C button with a little I because I want to check the production so they're both producing 135 which is handy. If you can do that, it's advisable, you know. Your production rate will go up so much more. There we go. Train broken down. So we just have to wait patiently for that. And if you click this, it'll show you the running costs and the reliability and the breakdowns since the previous service. Every so often a, tra a train will go into a depot or, or a truck or a plane, you know, it depends on what you're looking at. And they'll get a service which will keep their reliability going up. Well, not up, but it'll keep it from going down as much. And they'll naturally go and seek a service. And also, I forgot to mention, you can see the age. And in the brackets, you can see how long it'll run before the, re the lack of reliability really becomes an issue. So this guy hasn't made a profit yet. What's going on? Boom. I just wanted to see that. I saw the minus and I thought, yep, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at that and uh, see him in action, you know. So we don't have a lot to play with, money-wise. We, we just have to wait, you know. And that's the thing about Transport Tycoon. It's, uh, it's a very relaxed sort of, we can't re even repay our loan, you know. It's, it's only the first couple of years. That's when you, uh, you take out a lot of money. I wonder, I wonder. Our, our loan's still 150 grand, yeah. We can't take out any more as the years go by. But you hear that lovely little sound. That chi ching I love that. That's music to my ears. So, Maffing Hill City South. It's not producing a lot of steel. And not much of it has been transported either. So, we were right to just have that one lorry so far. Um... Hopefully he'll make more of a profit this year. Because we only introduced him within the last year, he's not going to make like a significant profit for us. I, to be quite honest with you, don't really bother with lorries that much. Um, I, 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 citizens celebrate. Hey. That reminds me. We can, we can actually see the computer like spanking me here. Oh no, we can't. Look at that. <laughs> I was actually expecting the computer to have crept up and overtaken me, but because it's only on medium rather than hard, even the hard computer, it's not sort of vicious, you know? For those of you who play uh, OpenTTD, there is a uh, computer called Admiral AI that I'd highly recommend if you want a real challenge. Admiral AI will take you to school and show you how it really should be done. There's also one, I think it's Simple AI or something, that just tries to emulate the original Transport Tycoon Deluxe AI. Let's see, we've got 15 grand now. There 
There's a lot of iron ore. Hmm. This could be an opportunity. Not enough is being transported. So... Let's build another one of these boys. Two! And we will go. And we'll not worry about full loads for them. We'll just uh, get them going as quickly as possible. It probably is a way of copying orders. I, I don't recall. I'm fairly sure that was uh, an open TTD thing, but whatever. It's not the end of the world. It just uh, gives you a more sort of personal touch. You know, you feel like you've crafted every single bit of the game. Yeah, you know, you've given orders to everything. Could we build another? Not quite yet. So this is the sort of thing. You've got a whole pile of stuff to exploit. Mediocre. Not enough of it's being transported. It's a supply and demand thing. And we nearly have enough for another. And that's what you do. It's about exponential growth. You know, you see a gap in the market that isn't being serviced or isn't being serviced well enough. And you're like, hey, I can come swooping in and I can I can do that. And I'll show you something else. Uh, well, I might not have time, to be honest. Uh, what I was planning on doing within the next 20 minutes, we'll see if I have enough money, is... Hmm. Should I wait... Yeah, I think I'll wait. And there's a reason for my waiting, and I'll explain now. Rail construction. And you're probably thinking, James, you've already got something heading there. Why would you connect a secondary thing? Well, Fair Watcher, who has already lasted 40 minutes or so into this, the reason for that is because I can connect the two. Hmm, interesting. The orientation appears to be off there. Ah, that's why. <laughs> that was a mistake. Let's get rid of that. It's just happy little accidents. I'd set number of tracks to three instead of one and platform length was wrong. So what we'll do is we'll change platform length to three. There we are. And that is now, as you can see, a train station and a lorry station. And you can have them working in tandem. So let's do that. We have a little bit of money to play with. Not much, but it should be enough to get us there, in theory. <laughs> Whether that's actually the case remains to be seen. The question is, how should we do it? There is some water there, but rather than being terrified of the water, what we'll do is we'll build straight up to it and we shall construct ourselves actually no hold on that run up was a little bit too long discretion is the better part of valor here we'll construct over here right then we'll build our bridge like so and uh, the bridge you build the uh, more expensive are faster, and it needs to be longer in order to get even more expensive ones. Uh, we'll go with the girder. We'll go with the expensive one, because we have a surplus of iron ore that we need to deliver to these poor people. So let's see. We can can we go? We can just go straight on, can't we? Why not? Oh, not enough cash. That's why. So how far can we build? We're down to 200 pounds. That is not a lot of money. Come on, give us money. Thank you. Have to wait for our trains to really come through for us. Can we construct? Hmm. It's not in the best of positions, is it? We'll have to go from behind. And we don't have enough cash for that. And that's the problem. We're just going to have to wait. Just gonna have to bide our time, be patient, and wait for those trains to come good for us. And you'll see we'll go into the red in a minute. There we go. Fortunately, we're saved. Still not enough cash. What's happened to our trains?
Come on. There we go. Up to 4,000. That'll help. Can't build it there. Steel mill in the way. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> so, as you can see, this probably won't work. Yeah, need 2,000 for that. We'll just build around it. Again, we were... This is essentially me admitting a mistake, you know? It's like saying, hey, we, uh, we spent too much money. And obviously we're going through farmland, and that's pricey to do. Because the local authority, or the local uh, farm, doesn't appreciate that. Ruining his crop to uh, head through with some train tracks. Let's head to about here. And we'll build out and we'll connect. Let's see. Just lower that land a little. Hmm. Gonna have to wait again. That's okay though. Not the end of the world. We need a tunnel here. And again, we're in the negative. So, while we're making money with those trains, let's cancel that. We have to wait now. And we'll, we'll just put them up there. You can move the uh, windows. Obviously, they're not perfectly in line. It's not really the end of the world. <laughs> Some OCD people will be looking at the screen and being like, James, no, no, James, what are you doing? So we have to wait. There we go, there's some fresh income. That'll do nicely. So we'll close that. And uh, we need to make a tight turn here. And we need to lower that land. Oof. Big hit to the old pocketbook there. But because we're building on grass there, it costs us less. Come on. Give us more money. We want another train. Three grand to play with. And this is the beginning of the game. This is how it goes. You know, you're on a shoestring budget. Like, there you go. I can't, just can't afford that. I'm, I'm trying to build too quickly, too fast. And I can't see because of those trees. So I'm just gonna get rid of them. There we go, there's a bit more visibility. And, uh, should we raise the land there? <laughs> it's not going to let us. Gonna have to wait for our next injection of cash. Hmm. We could lower that land there, I guess. There we are. That works. So, a bit of a slope into the tunnel. And then we shall just head over here. Like so. And then we'll make that turn like that. Now you're probably observing what I'm doing. You're saying, ah, right, that's how he's going. A bit of haphazard mice handling there. Hands starting to cramp up a little bit. Nothing to be too worried about. And we need a uh, depot for our train. But again, we run into the same problem as before. Don't have the money for it. Automatically builds the tracks there, which is nice. Now, I would build build a train, but I have to be patient. I have to wait. Now you can look at your lorries at this point, and you can see, yeah, he's making a paltry profit, just about enough to you know justify his existence, really. Um, but not great, not great at all. Let's see what the uh, the steel production of the place thinks. Let's see. How are we doing? Poor. Well, you're not producing much steel, fella. You know, you're you're only producing so much. Maybe it's like, hey, you're not delivering much, so we're not going to produce much. It's like a steel mate. see how we're doing. Yep, see, because of our uh, our rampant attempt at expansionism, is that a word? It is now. Uh, we, uh, we have issues, but we have to wait until we can get, you know, anywhere between 11 and 30,000. I'm going to go with the Kirby uh, Paul tank. 
because we we can't afford much more and that's a problem and that's the year and it's not looked too good look at the difference in train and road vehicle income like our increase in road vehicle income has been substantial because we got all those other iron ore lorries going but the costs of construction and so on have just outweighed that to the point that we can't quite get the next train on the rails which is disappointing because that would ramp up our iron ore production like it's just sat there it's waiting desperately for us to uh, and we can't borrow obviously 10 grand we're nearly there it's an agonizing wait but we will get there hmm not much to say really it's just it's just a case of waiting not the most exciting thing in the world for people to watch you know no, nobody would crowd round oh look at that agonizing breakdown there just before he got to the station nobody would crowd around an old PC and be like yay let's watch Transport Tycoon it's something you play and there's something very zen about it you know there we go we have enough money now let's get this going so we want iron ore trucks let's let's just fire a pile of them on there yeah no because we've no money <laughs> the operating cost is slowly eating away at our cash we have to wait for this guy to hopefully not break down and uh, then we'll we'll give it maybe three maybe four if we're lucky one two three okay if we load it with more it'll go a lot slower and uh, as a result of that it'll take longer but uh, generate more profit I want to find a happy medium because it's quite a distance to go we want uh, we'll see a really old train pop out here look at that boy he's like something you'd see on a vintage railroad you know so he's gonna fill up with ore and uh, there's still plenty there for the uh, lorries and stuff so hopefully he'll he'll be a bit of a profit spinner I mean he's not the the best engine in the world don't tell him I said that like look the speed is is, is not great let's have a look at his stats here there you are max speed 40 miles an hour so I mean really that bridge was entirely pointless we could have gone with the slower bridge but I think if I was playing this a little longer I'd have him initially run up a profit and then replace him with a faster engine to maximize on those profits this is very basic stuff by the way I've said it before and I'll say it again watch the open TTD series and the explanation by Master Hellish much better job I'm just sort of having fun and letting you watch you know so we're waiting for this boy we're getting a bit of profit there that's nice and hopefully we will you can see our operating profits go down that will go up it will now that we're not constructing like masses of stuff and what this little leeway here gives us now is the opportunity there we go here we go with a profit yay 3000 nice so we'll look at him and be like yes I've made a profit well done train well done and hopefully that will mean that it will produce more steel for the other guy and it's broken down well done <laughs> what we can do oh my goodness loads of breakdowns what we can do briefly is we can go to road construction and uh, just for the sake of uh, efficiency we'll stick a depot there because that guy there he's operating here to here and there's no depots in sight the only de see he's broken down there because he's just he's not been to it's like he's proving my point isn't that excellent 
Yeah, there's no depots in sight. Uh, neither is. And uh, I guess we can uh, construct some more vehicles in this iron ore route if we wanted. Let's see, what's it do? 50% transported. And what are the ratings for that mediocre? Yeah, let's let's build some more vehicles, shall we? Let's take advantage of this while we can. Seven grand outlay. We can do that. And uh, I think we'll quickly build another one as well. That's the wrong one. We don't want to send him there. <laughs> He'd be like, "Where? Why are you here? Where is your steel?" All right. Can we clone this guy? I don't think we can. Or if we can, I've uh, forgotten how. So with trucks, because they're so much cheaper, you can have that steady stream of industry just heading in over and over and over again to sort of uh, create like this giant anaconda of transportation on the roads. Broken down. What's his reliability like? 94%. Certainly doesn't look like it. It's like playing XCOM, you know? You have 99% chance to hit. You missed. <laughs> dun, dun. The music gets stuck in your head. Beautiful SGM rendered transport tycoon music. Could listen to it forever. Look at the speed this guy's going at. I've seen glaciers move faster than you. Still, he's made a profit. We shouldn't bash him too much. It is a long distance to go. And he's not as good as those Jinzu steam ones, you know. Is it a Jinzu? Let's, let's find out. Let's go to new vehicles and see. Yeah, a Jinzu. I wish I could have spent more money, but it is a case if you get what you pay for. He's just there for a quick, brief profit and then nothing more. Let's see now. Yep, there's our little lorries making a bit more profit for us. And that'll steadily creep up. As you can see, our profits after that struggle in the outlay there have started to climb up again. And our income is now much healthier. So what I'm going to do, because I'm, I'm probably not going to build more stuff, I'm going to repay some of my loan. And that means the loan interest for the year will go down. And that means less deductions. And one of the most satisfying things to do in the game, obviously our loan's still at 140 grand. But say if I wanted to build something now, I could go and be like, hey, I can lend, uh, I can, I can borrow 10 grand now as leeway on top of whatever profit I've got, rather than being maxed out. So I'm going to wait till that's 10 grand again and start to repay until eventually that loan will go down to zero. I talked about this in my review. This is the initial period where you're desperately trying to balance finance with, you know, incoming and outgoing costs and uh, profits. And it doesn't sound interesting, but it's exceedingly well done. And when you actually play it, it's uh, very entertaining. What? Oh, he's going to the depot. I wondered, he, he sort of turned in there and he was like, nah, I'm not going to deliver. You need to deliver. Unfortunately, terrible, terrible place to break down. And this is an issue. If they break down in the wrong place, the other guy can't get in. So he's probably going to go for a service as well. Yeah, rightly so. Transport company in trouble. Transport, Tenley Transport will be sold off or declared bankrupt unless performance increases soon. What's happened to Tenley Transport? Let's find out. So we have the option to buy shares in the company. But obviously we don't have money for that. We can buy them out. The company value is 68 grand. But, nah, we're not going to do that. So let's look at some vehicles for Tenley Transport see what's happened here. See, he made a profit there on that one. But this fella here, and this is something you can do. You, I've been very insular. I've looked at my own stuff. Like, he's built an enormous sort of uh, 
railway system here and he's done sort of what I did and he's, he's stuck just one of the uh, most basic of trains to it and that doesn't work. What about road vehicles? Tenley, do you have any of those? He's no road vehicles so he won't have any ships. So that's all he's got. He's just got those two trains. Effingly Market, again, he's, he's got one there and uh, he's got a pile of buses which are doing well for him profit-wise and he, he will be just fine. He'll be okay. But uh, the other fella, he's in trouble as you can see by the operating profit. And as you can see by the operating profit, we are just nudging ourselves away from any opposition. Obviously it's not much opposition. And we'll repay again that 10 grand. Nice. So, let's see. We, we have 9 grand, we have 19 grand to play with. Not really enough for another train system. Fortunately, that's not our coal mine. It's worth always, when you hear that little sort of uh, noise at the bottom, to make sure that it's not affecting you. Its production's gone way down, but since it's nothing to do with us, that's not a problem. Not an issue for us. So, let's have a look at our map. And uh, I've shown you the basics. Um, one, of, one of the more advanced things uh, in the game is the uh, trading of goods and if we go to uh, one of our little boys here he is supplying that right to that factory now that factory is creating goods out of either livestock crane and steel that factory can be supplied by multiple trains so or or oh I guess we can repay 10 grand more. Excellent. Uh, and we'll just go back to that finance briefly. You'll see the loan interest going down. Now, obviously, we borrowed a lot, but uh, over, actually, our loan interest went up there. I think that's because we borrowed more that year. But this year, we're going to have a significantly lower loan interest because we keep repaying. I've got 25 quid minus nine. That'll go up again later. It's just the operating profit, as you can see. Thank you, Mr. Steel Guy. How are you doing? Yeah, last year he made 500 pounds. That's not great. That's, yeah, it was, it, was, it was just like, I knew there was steel there, so I couldn't like not transport it. Now, we could like, look for livestock and grain. We could do that. Let's have a look at our map of the world. Factories. Let's see. We want a farm. There. No. No. That's a classic case of colour blindness there. Look at that. Steel mill and farm. Very similar. I'm fairly sure there was a farm around here somewhere. Do you remember we, uh, we were constantly... There it is. We were building over the top of it. But for me, I feel that might be too far away with our budget to uh, to do. So we've got coal, we've got oil, and uh, oil wells and uh, rigs will pop up. And you'll be able to supply these power stations, uh, sorry, the, uh, the oil refineries with uh, crude. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think there's much we can do in this position, but that's okay. I've, I've shown you the basics, and uh, I guess I've run out of stuff to talk about. I mean, I could talk about, you know, stuff that I could do later in the game, but why would I, you know? Let's go back to our original lovely little trains and just uh, observe them continuing to make a wonderful profit for us year in year out and yeah that's it I guess I'll just uh, sit till my timer goes off <laughs> literally just a silent playthrough of Arrested Transport Tycoon huh 
that that would go well. And the timer has gone off. Right now. I literally picked up my phone and it went off. Okay. That's Transport Tycoon Deluxe, the very basic opening game. Uh, as the game goes on, there will be an increased emphasis on passenger transport, uh, multiple industries, and uh, it's, it's just addictive. It's one of those games that just sucks you in if you're of a certain mindset, a certain persuasion. Like even now, when I see that 10 grand, I'm like, oh, repay. That's great. We're, we're down to our original loan. So, <laughs> in conclusion, I borrowed 50 grand and uh, I still haven't made it back. But, I have a lovely transportation system now, consisting of some lovely trains and a few lorries that aren't great, but they're managing. And that's Transport Tycoon Deluxe. And if you enjoyed this long play and got to the end of it somehow, then uh, I do one of these every weekend. I've got hundreds of other videos. Feel free to take a look. And if you like and you haven't subscribed already, feel free to. Until next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>